What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report for Friday, March 20th, 2015, delivering some of the major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook or on Twitter, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. Or on Twitter, at the Enter Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to our page. U.S. Magazine or rather, Us Magazine has retracted an interview with Kendall Jenner it published Wednesday, wherein the teen model confirmed her father, Bruce Jenner's widely reported gender reassignment. Um, the interview was allegedly conducted by an independent freelance journalist at the Saturday, March 14th taping of Comedy Central's roast of Justin Bieber in Los Angeles. When Ms. Jenner denied via Twitter that the interview took place, Us Weekly immediately reached out to the freelance reporter. He stood by the interview and continued to maintain that the quotes are accurate, the magazine said. The magazine also added, however, after attempting to reconfirm his account, editors of Us have concern about the veracity of this interview and the circumstances under, under which it was obtained. We would like to retract the story entirely and have it removed from our website. We sincerely apologize to Ms. Jenner and her family. The Us story quoted Kendall saying, he's a wonderful man and just because he's changing shoes now, so to speak, doesn't make him less wonderful. I will always love my dad, whether he's a man or a woman. Jenner hit back hours after the story went live, tweeting, quote, shame on Us Weekly for making up quotes. I never said those things. I never spoke to them. However, it is legal for someone to quote someone and publish it. In fact, you never said what was quoted, she added. A Kardashian spokesperson had no comment beyond Kendall's tweet. The reality TV show has been in a PR blackout since Bruce transition plans, picking up steam in December. The clan, which includes Kim Kardashian West, did not participate in any interview to promote Sunday's 10th season premiere of Ease Keeping Up with the Kardashians. The Kardashian-Jenner clan was also the subject of a People magazine cover story this week, which quotes a family insider saying the divorce of Bruce and Kris Jenner caused a divided but a divide, but Bruce's decision to share his transition has caused an even greater divide. Bruce recently moved out from Family Hunt Calabasas, a tony suburb of Los Angeles, to a secluded home in Malibu, California, where he says to be reconnecting with children from his first marriage, says People. The magazine said of his Kardashian stepkids, Kim, Courtney, Rob, and, and Chloe, there are weeks where they didn't hear from Bruce, as well as daughters Kylie and Kendall, whom he shares with Chris. A film adaptation of the singing and dancing puppet series Fraggle Rock for the 1980s has gained a friend in actor Joseph Gordon-Lovett, um, the star of The Dark Knight Rises, who will produce and star in the film from New Regency with the Henson Co Company and Lisa Henson. Gordon-Lovett said in a statement, the first screen personas I ever loved was Henson's creations, first on Sesame Street and then on Fraggle Rock. Jim Henson's characters make you laugh and sing, but they also layered surprising and wise. From Oscar the Grouch to Yoda to the Fraggles, I never stopped loving his work even as a young frisky man and on into adulthood. He also added, collaborating with Lisa Henson makes me confident we could do something that Jim would have loved. I'm grateful and excited to be working with New Regency on this project. The Divergent series Insurgent made $4.1 million on Thursday night at the box office. Shailene Woodley stars in the sequel based on Veronica Robb's best-selling novel of the same name as a young rebel in a dangerous post-apocalyptic dystopian Chicago. The insurgent Thursday night figure is down a bit from the original film Divergent, which made $4.9 million overnight in its opening weekend one year ago. That figure was high enough for Lionsgate to immediately greenlight an adaptation of the second book Insurgent. The second film is expected to open at number one over the weekend and potentially reach $60 million, which would be higher than Divergent. Insurgent has also opened internationally in 52 markets, landing at number one in 49 of them, and topping Divergent returns in countries including Brazil, France, Italy, and Malaysia. With Woodley, Kate Winslet, and co-stars Miles Teller, Theo James, and Ansel Elgort front and center, Divergent opened to $54 million last March and went on to take in $158 million domestically and $289 million worldwide. In April of 2014, the studio said that the finale, Allegiant, will be split into two films and release in March 2016 and March 2017. Lawyers representing Robin Thicke, Pharrell Williams, and several other parties in the Blurred Line case ripped the, the Marvin Gaye, the family of, of late soul singer Marvin Gaye, in a court document accusing them of unfair tactics 
in what they characterize as an attempt to subvert the verdict that awarded the Gay family almost $7.4 million last week. In the response filed today, Thicke's attorney asked the court to strike two motions filed this week by the, the Gay family, which attempted to add rapper T.I. and the Interscope parties, Star Trek Entertainment, UMG Distribution, Universal Music Recordings, Interscope Records to Thicke and Williams' liability for copy right infringement as well as the injunction against the song Blurred Lines. Um, the verdict read on March 10th, 2015, the verdict read no party objected to the verdict and the jury was discharged. The document reads going on to say that the motion quote seeks instead to entirely overturn the jury's verdict and to hold liable TI and Interscope parties uh, quote who the jury did not find in French. Saying that the Gay's family's attorneys have attempted to circumvent the normal procedure of post-trial motions to the court. Fix attorneys called actions by the Gay's family's attorney improper, urging the court to reject their, quote, unfair tactics. Um, Paul Phillips, lawyer for Marvin Gay III, told the rap, the nature of Mr. King's response comes as no surprise. In every sense of the phrase, the thick parties are backed into a corner legally and are fighting desperately to get out. As for our recent filings, they were made in strict conformity with the court's mandates and were confident in the ultimate positions we have taken. The document goes on to argue that the Gay's family's motion for an injunction jumps the gun, presuming that the other motion to amend the verdict will be granted. Thick's attorneys called both motions not only groundless, but procedurally infirm. Calling both the trial and the verdict, quote, fundamentally flawed and referring specifically to the verdict as, quote, an object miscarriage of justice unsupported by the evidence and contrary to law. Thick's attorney suggests that the gay family is asking the court to, quote, prejudge and, quote, resolve all of the thick, all of Thick's party's motions before they have been able to file their own motions with the court, citing the gay family attorney's, quote, slapdash approach to the post-trial issues. After calling on the court to strike the gay family's motion, Thick's attorneys requested a status conference to be set for the week of April 6, 2015, for all parties to discuss motions and procedural issues. Actor Ryan Gosley and his girlfriend and the mother of his child, Eva Mendes, sparked Twitter debate over the number one cause of divorce. The 41-year-old actress and new mother claims sloppy fashion choices are to blame. Mendes told Extra TV on Thursday, you can't do sweatpants. No. Ladies, number one cause of divorce in America? Sweatpants. No. Can't do that. While countless clothing companies didn't agree, neither did Mendes' longtime boyfriend, Ryan Gosling, and he took to Twitter to defend his personal choices, fa fashion choices. Uh, the actor wrote, obviously sweatpants things was a joke. Wearing them now, that's right. Tweeting in sweatpants. Rats said too much. You win again, Twitter. Wrote the actor. Gosling's response to his The Place Beyond the Pines co-star and the mother of his daughter, Esmeralda, sparked a rally cry of support across social media as Twitter followers weighed in on Mendel's, uh, Men, excuse me, Mendez's verbal uh, fa pass. One Twitter writer wrote, Eva Mendez says the number one cause of divorce in America is sweatpants. Couldn't hear the rest because my pleathered husband keeps um, keeping throng was squeaking. Another Twitter uh Another Twitter follower wrote, Ryan Gosling, at Ryan Gosling, more tweets, more sweatpants. While another Twitter follower wrote, we know you don't judge sweatpants, Ryan. Obviously, George doesn't either, which is why we love you both. Actress Ashley Judd had some choice words for her Twitter critics. The actress penned an emotional essay about violence against women in which she talked about her personal experience with rape and incest. The essay titled, Forget Your Team, Your Online Violence Towards Girls and Women Is What Kicked My Ass, came in response to a tweet she posted that was critical of the University of Kentucky's opponent in the SCE, at the SEC basketball tournament. Judd is a UK alum. The tweet angered rival Arkansas fans who slammed Judd on social media causing, quote, a tsunami of gender-based violence and misogyny, according to the actress. In the essay, she wrote, tweets roll in, calling me a C-U-N-T, a whore or a bitch, or telling me to suck a two-inch D, 
Some even threatened rape or anal, anal, anal. I delete my original tweet after the game before all hell broke loose to make amends for any genuine offense I may have committed by describing play as dirty. Of course, other people may include my uncle, who is a chaplain, also expressed fear that the athletes would be badly hurt, but my uncle wasn't told he, smell, he was a smelly pee. He wasn't spared because of his profession. Being a male sports fan is his immunity from abuse. What happened to me is a devastating social norm experienced by millions of girls and women on the internet. Online harassers use the slightest excuse or no excuse at all to dismember our personal fit. My tweet was simply the convenient delivery system from a rage towards women that lurks perpetually. I know this experience is universal, though. I'll describe specifically what happened to me. I read in a vivid language the various um, ways, humiliating and violent, in which my genitals, vaginal, and anal should be violated, shamed, exploited, and dominated. Either the writer was going to do these things to me, or they were what I deserved. My intellect was insulted. I was called stupid and idiot. My age, appearance, and body were attacked. Even my family was thrown into the mix. Someone wrote that my grandmother is creepy. She also added, I am a survivor of sexual assault, rape, and incest. I am greatly blessed that in 2006, other thriving survivors introduced me to recovery. I seized it. My own willingness partnered with a simple kit of tools has empowered me to take the essential odyssey from undefended and vulnerable victim to empowered survivor. Today, nine years late, uh, nine years into my recovery, I can go further and say my story is not my story. It is something a higher power spiritually for me has been vital in this healing using to uses to allow me the grace and privilege of helping others who are still hurting and perhaps to offer a piece of education awareness and action to our world. On the strength of his current seven season ratings, RuPaul Drag Race has already been renewed for an eighth season. Uh, Chris McCarthy told The Wrap, who is the MTV2 and Logo TV general manager, it's kind of amazing to see how each season RuPaul's Drag, Queen, drag Race continues to build and the audience refresh. The passion and the fandom of it is quite understanding. Additionally, the cable news has told the rapper exclusively it has greenlit new series Behind the Moves, working title, which will be hosted by Broadway actor and Ugly Betty star Michael Yuri. The season 7 premiere of RuPaul Dance uh, Drag Race was not only one of the reality's competitions most watched, but it earned a nearly 20% increase in the advertisers' coveted 18-49 to 49 demographic. Additionally, its second episode of the season saw a double-digit increase over the debut episode. McCarthy pointed out, over 6 million people have watched the show in some way, shape, or form across all of our platforms just this season alone, the three episodes that we're in. Uh, he also added, the audience continues to build and demand for it, and the content is so great, why not take advantage of all that energy right now? World of Wonder is such an amazing partner to work with, and Brew, that's what we want to get out there while it's hot and getting cast for the next season. John Stewart often attacks his nemesis on the Fox News channel, but he really went after them on Thursday night. The Daily Show host tore into what he called the shocking, terrible cable news channel for demanding an, an apology from members of the media and politicians who oversaw the now infamous Ferguson Hands Up Don't Shoot protest flashpoint, which according to the Department of Justice didn't go down the way many outlets reported. Stewart stated, the, less, the lesson Fox News is getting at is very clear. Wouldn't it be nice if people who had jumped to conclusions and peddled a false, divisive, anger-stroking narrative had to apologize for misleading America? Stewart also noted how Fox chose to ignore that pesky other DOJ report, the one that found evidence of systematic racism by the Ferguson Police Department. Then the shit got real, Stewart's words, as the Daily Show host drew parallels between Fox's over-the-top initial Benghazi coverage, the very thing it upsets, it's upset about in Missouri. When the, answer, when the answers that trickled it didn't match the network's narrative, Stewart says Fox News talking heads was fairly mum. But with an assist from his video team, Stewart has been take, uh, talking using Fox News Channel's own words and clips against them by inter-splicing um, Benghazi and Ferguson's commentary. Stewart then summed up what he referred to as the beauty with which is the ugliness of Fox News. He also said they demand accountability, accountability for anger and decisiveness with holding themselves entirely unaccountable for their anger and decisiveness, he concluded. Michael Lewis, 
Lewinsky addressed cyberbullying in a TED talk on Thursday, making only her second public appearance since leaving the public eye in 2005. She began by saying, quote, at the age of 22, I fell in love with my boss. At the age of 24, I learned the devastating consequence. Lewinsky was, of course, referring to her now infamous affair with then-President Bill Clinton. She continued, quote, not a day goes by that I am not reminded of my mistake, and I regret that mistake deeply. The London School of Economics graduate said she was, quote, patient zero of losing a personal reputation on a global scale almost instantaneously. In 1998, when the scandal broke, the Internet was still a new technology, with most media outlets relying on print or on television to distribute information. However, it was news aggression site Drudge Report that first reported on the Lewinsky-Clinton affair. Lewinsky said it was the first time traditional news was usurped by the internet, a click that reverberated, reverberated around the whole world. Almost overnight, Lewinsky said she became, quote, that woman with people all over the world labeling her a tramp, tart, slut, whore. Lewinsky said a marketplace is a merch where public uh, humiliation is a commodity and shame is an industry. The more we click on this kind of gossip, the more numb we get into the human lives behind it. Lewinsky concluded her remarks by saying, quote, anyone who is suffering from shame and public humiliation needs to know one thing. You can survive it. I know it's hard. It may not be painless, quick, and easy, but you can insist on a different ending to your story. Lewinsky's speech has received very positive attention, with TV showrunner Shonda Rhimes tweeting a simple yes in response. Lewinsky's TED talk comes on the heels of Ashley Judd's announcement that she will press charges against Twitter, Twitter trolls for sexist and misogynistic misogynistic comments made against her. And finally, the Billboard Hot 100 charts uh, came out for the week of the 16th. At number 10, uh, Trap Queen uh, by Fetty Rap. Number 9, Pitbull and Neil with The Time of Our Lives. Number 8, Sam Smith with Lay Me Down. Number 7, Taylor Swift with the song Style. Number 6, The Weeknd with Earn It from the soundtrack of Fifty Shades of Grey. Number five, Rihanna, Kanye West, and Paul McCartney with four or five seconds. Number four, Ellie Gooding with Like Me Like You Do. Number three, Ed Sheeran with Thinking Out Loud. Number two, Maroon 5 with Sugar. And still, the number one song in the country right now is Uptown Funk by Mark, Mark Rawlson featuring Bruno Mars. And that is your entertainment report for Friday, March 20th, 2015. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some of the major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook or on Twitter, facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, or on Twitter at The Enter Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio. Just search for The Entertainment Report and it'll take you to our page. Have a great weekend, everybody. I will see you on Monday. Bye.